Hello everyone. I welcome all of you to my first session on inheritance. You will be having a question. Why sir is not starting the class from the first chapter? So why he is already in the 10th chapter? So you will have a lot of questions like this and when he will do all the other chapters. So please remember most of your questions in the lab program will come from the unit B and also from the unit A. Suppose if I start with the unit B, it will be a helpful for all of you to study both lab program as well as the unit B chapters. So that is the reason behind that. So please remember, so whatever the concepts that you are reading in the unit B, the same concepts you will have in the lab programs. By saying this, let me start my class. So what is the first thing that I will understand in the session? So that is what I will call it as a bird's eye view. In this bird's eye view, I'm trying to give you the glimpse or the concepts that I'm going to cover in this chapter. What is the first thing that I will do? So I will give you the brief knowledge about inheritance. I'll give you the brief knowledge about inheritance. What is the second thing that I will learn? So usage of inheritance. Why should I use inheritance? What is the use of inheritance? Why should I spend some time on this concept, what is the usage of it is what I will discuss in the second topic. The third and most important topic, roles of visibility mode is what I will discuss in the third topic. And the next one is levels of inheritance. Please make a note, this is going to be very, very, very important for all of you. So you will have a question from this particular topic. So most of the previous year papers has got the question on this particular topic. So I will be dealing this topic in detail. So please make a note on this particular topic. So the next one is concepts of abstract class. This is a very small topic that we have in this chapter. So I will discuss this topic with the example. And the last one that is constructor and destructors in derived class with an example I will be discussing is what I would like to say in this point of time to all of you. So moving on to the next important thing that I have, I'm just giving you a clue. Please make a note of it. I have one five marks question from this chapter. How many question? You will get one five marks question from this chapter. Please remember whenever you are getting any question from the chapter of inheritance, you will get one five marks question. You should concentrate on learning five marks content. Whenever you are preparing anything from this chapter, please prepare in terms of five marks. So that is what you should keep it in your mind whenever you're reading inheritance. Let me start this chapter with the basic concept that is base class and derived class. Whenever I use a word called base class, please remember for base class, always I will call grandfather, okay? So you should not write like this in your exam also. What is that you will call? Grandfather. So what is that for this derived class? For this derived class, I will call it as a father, okay? I will call it as a father. This is just an example uh, I'm just trying to give to all of you to just remember this base class and derived class. Let's start the concept. What is this base class and derived class? So if you are inheriting anything from base class to subclass, base class to subclass, that process is what I will call it as a inheritance. I will repeat for all of you. If you are inheriting, inheriting in a sense, you're taking some of the properties from the base class to subclass. This process is what I will call it as a inheritance now can you give me some example for base class and subclass uh, i have something okay if i am giving something to others so i will become the base class and those who are borrowing from me so they will become the derived class they will become the derived class that is what they are trying to explain with a definition so what is that it is a class whose properties are inherited by another class if at all you are saying that as a base class, then that class should be able to give its properties to 
another class is what they are trying to explain with respect to base class. What is the next one that I have derived class? A class which is inheriting, a class which is taking the property from other class, such class is what I will call it as a derived class. This is the two important words which you should remember throughout this chapter. If I say the word inheritance, these two words are mandatory that you should remember, my dear students. Let me go to the next concept, keeping your exam point of view apart. So what do they use if I learn the inheritance concept? Let us understand this. Let's take an example to understand the inheritance in better way. So imagine I have to write or I have to calculate the average of given numbers. So let's understand like this. 1 plus 2 plus 3 divided by 3. That's how you will calculate, right? Yes. So I will just treat this as part 2 and this as part 1. Okay. Let me just consider like that. I have already written the code for part 1. I have written the program for this part 1. But I don't have the program for this part 2. Okay. So I have written the program to calculate the sum of these numbers. But my program is not able to calculate or it is not able to divide the number or the sum whatever I have. What is that I will do now? So please understand. So whatever the program that I have already written. I will take that along with that I will just add the extra features extra feature in the sense what it should divide my entire sum with the number whatever you have given so that is the extra feature that I am adding for the previous program whatever I have when I am reusing the program so what is the concept that you are using my dear students you are using the concept called inheritance so that is the benefit of inheritance you can reuse the code whatever you have that is the best opportunity that you will get if you are a programmer and if you are using a inheritance concept so let us understand what is the advantage that i have with respect to inheritance so that is the first advantage that i have reusing the existing code only if you are using the concept of inheritance you will reuse the existing code so what is the second one that we have faster development time what exactly faster development time is all about i am reusing my program suppose if i am reusing the existing program obviously my development time should become faster yes or no because i am not spending time again to write the code which is already i have so that is the reason my development time is faster so that is the reason my development time is faster easy to maintain is one more advantage if you are using the inheritance and very important point easy to extend just now i told you so you are extending you are able to extend your program with the extra features so this is possible and this is very easy if you are using the concept of inheritance so the last one very important uh, point that you should remember memory utilization the costliest thing that we have in the computer is memory. Imagine we have a WhatsApp. If you send a message, just imagine after one hour it will reach. Would you like to use it? No. Imagine if the WhatsApp is consuming 3 GB of space. Would you like to use it? No. Please remember, if you want to become a good programmer, two things you should keep it in your mind. That it should take less memory and it should take less time for the execution. In the same way, so inheritance will help me to manage my memory efficiently. So guys, this is the important advantages that you should remember with respect to inheritance. Moving on to the next important topic for the day. What is this? You have written sir, only ABCD. We are learning ABCD in the second PUC, is it? No, my dear students. I would like to explain the different types of inheritance with this diagram. Probably this diagram will help you to understand the concept of inheritance in a better way. So let's start with the first one. Imagine the first one that is the first inheritance what we have is a single level inheritance. What is single level inheritance? Uh, you need to understand. Suppose this is what I will call it as a base class. What is this? This is what I will call it as a base class. If at all I have only one base class, 
I will repeat if at all I have only one base class and if I have only one derived class. In, what is this? This is what I will call it as a derived class. If at all I have one base class and one derived class, dear students, you need to understand this is a single level inheritance. This is what I will call it as a single level inheritance. So I have given you an example in the beginning slide. What you will call this as? So this is grandfather, okay? This is father, okay? Don't, don't uh, think that I'm writing girlfriend. No, I'm not writing girlfriend. So please remember this is grandfather, okay? So I have grandfather and this is father. So this is what type of inheritance? This is single inheritance. This is what we call it as a single inheritance. The next type of inheritance that we have is multiple inheritance. Please observe this word multiple. Multiple in the sense what? Many. What is that many that I have? I have many base classes. Many in the sense what? Can I say it like this? So more than one. What is that? If you have more than one base class and one derived class. How many derived class I have? Only one derived class. Then such type of inheritance is what I will call it as a multiple inheritance. Such type of inheritance is what I will call it as a multiple inheritance. So what is the next one that I have? I have the next one as hierarchical. Hierarchical. Imagine I have a principal in the college. How many principal I can have? I can have only one. So under the principal, I will have the head of the department. For computer science, I will have one head of the department. For biology, I will have one head of the department. For chemistry, I will have one head of the department. For economics, I will have one head of the department. Like this, my dear students, this I will call it as a principal. So this I will call it as a head of the department. This I will call it as a head of the department. So this is what I will call it as a hierarchy. This is what I will call it as a hierarchy. So what is this? Can I have three principal and one head of the department? No, I cannot have. Can I have one principal and three head of the department? Yes, I can have. So please observe how many principals I have. I have one. So what is this? So this is what I will call it as a base class and this is what I will call it as a derived class. So that is what you need to remember. So what is the meaning of hierarchical inheritance now? Suppose if you have one base class and multiple derived class, then that inheritance, you will call it as a hierarchical inheritance. Then that inheritance, I will call it as a hierarchical inheritance. That is what you need to understand with respect to the third inheritance. Moving on to the next one, multi-level inheritance. Multi-level in the sense what? You have more than one level. This is what I will call it as a level. This is what I will call it as a level. So how many levels I have? More than one. So that's why I will call it as a multi-level. That's why I will call it as a multi-level. What is this? What, what do you call this as? This is grandfather. Okay. This is father and this is myself. Right. So grandfather, father and myself. Right. So I have more than one level. So if I have more than one level, such type of inheritance, I will call it as a multi-level inheritance. Such type of inheritance, I will call it as a multi-level inheritance. Can you identify how many types of inheritance I have in this diagram? Please observe. What is this? This is what I will call it as a base class. Suppose if the base class is having more than one derived class, what type of inheritance is there? What type of inheritance is that? I will give you a clue. Just now I said, if you have one principal and if you have more than one HOD, okay? So then what do you call it as? Hierarchical. What do you call it as? Hierarchical. So fine, till here you will call it as a hierarchical. So please observe. Here you have one more inheritance. Please observe. You have one more inheritance here. So what is that? Can you call this as, can you call this as a derived class? Yes. For this derived class, can you call this as a base class? Yes. For this derived class, can you call this as a base class? Yes, you can call. So then what type of inheritance is this? Suppose if you have, suppose if you have more than one base class to one derived class, then that you will call it as a 
multiple inheritance then that you will call it as a multiple inheritance so please remember hybrid inheritance it is a combination of two types of inheritance that is what you need to understand with respect to the types of inheritance if you write all the five diagrams with definitions five marks is yours please understand please practice it this is very important question from this chapter that you can expect so hope you have understood the concept of different types of inheritance moving on to the next topic it's a uh, time for all of us to understand the technical issues with respect to the inheritance concept when i'm writing a program if i don't know this concept then i will not be able to write any program with respect to inheritance so let me give you a brief knowledge with respect to the role of visibility modes the role of visibility modes so what is this role of visibility mode let me explain in detail with respect to the visibility modes let me start guys i have the base class if i have the base class in inheritance obviously i will have the derived class so you will write easily suppose if i have the base class then obviously i will have the derived class easy to remember yes how many access specifiers we have we already know so please write it in order so it's it should be private public protected three p's what is that private public protected it should be in that particular order so it should public should come in the middle private public protected so fine in the same way you need to remember the order here also first you will start with the public private protected here you will write public private protected so you have written that i will repeat one more time so the first thing that you will write is base class the second one that you will write as derived class here you will remember so you all you will not start with public instead you will start with private private public protected here public private protected so you have written that it is very important to understand the concept now all these things you will write this is the basic thing now the concept the picture starts now please understand if i have a private class if i have a private class what type of class that i have i have a private class okay that class i will treat it as a base class so in short i have a base class in private access specifier if i inherit and inherit that private class under the scope for public so what will happen what is the mode of that what will be the mode of that can i inherit that no i cannot inherit if i if at all i have my private class that is the end of the inheritance that is the end of the inheritance please understand i have my base class this base class access specifier or the visibility mode is private i cannot inherit i cannot perform the inheritance i cannot perform the inheritance that is the end so you cannot derive this to any other subclass that is what you need to understand so that is what i am trying to explain here so private base class you have if you inherit for the next level in public mode can you inherit no it is not possible if you try to inherit for the private so can you do it no it is not possible for protected no it is not possible so if at all your class is in private you cannot perform the inheritance so that case is ruled out so if you have the base class in private mode come on tell along with me so you cannot inherit you cannot perform the inheritance so it is not possible so now suppose if i have my base class in public access specifier so my base class is in public access specifier if you access or if you have the base class in public suppose if you inherit in public mode that class will be in which mode it will be in public mode only that class the derived class will be in public mode only suppose if i have my base class in public and you are trying to inherit okay in private mode then derived class will become private then the derived class will become private suppose if you have the base class as public and you are trying to inherit in the protected mode your derived class will become private your derived class will become private here you need to understand 
here you need to understand the public based class if you are inheriting in private or protected mode that derived class will become private mode the derived class will become private mode so what is the next one that i have i have protected i have protected so if i have the protected if i try to inherit in the public mode my derived class will be in the protected mode only my derived class will be in the protected mode only the mode will not change suppose if i have my base class in protected and if i am trying to derive that in private mode so my derived class will be in private my derived class will be in private again remember i have the protected base class and i'm trying to inherit with the protected mode so my derived class will be in private my derived class will be in private so this is what you need to understand so these concepts you will understand very very clearly when you practice the inheritance program if you practice this inheritance program you will get the clarity of this concept my dear students so hope you have understood this suppose so what type of questions they will ask in the exam with respect to this so they'll ask you to write the visibility chart this is what you need to write this is you should be able to write this chart it's very easy to remember sir neve en helidru nan gotte aglilla sir it is very difficult to remember aa tara helorige so what is that you should do you just have to remember this first line you will write not inherited so that is complete the second line please observe public and protected if you write these two the rest everything is private the rest everything is private it is very simple to remember what is the first line that you will write so not inherited not inherited not inherited then after that you will write public protected after that the rest everything is private 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 if you write like this you are done and over so complete marks whatever you have it will be in your pocket that is what you need to remember easy tricks to remember thank you bye bye have a great day ahead thank you very much